Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, recently I got a replacement credit card in the mail. I got one of these that now has a computer chip embedded into the card. Maybe you have gotten one too. I started using it. And I thought, wow, that's really neat. It has a computer chip, so it must protect me from fraud, from other people using my credit card. But after I began using it, I realized, wait, it's not to protect me from fraud. It's actually designed to verify my identity and to protect the merchants and the credit card from fraud. Verifying your identity. Who are you? A couple of weeks ago, I went to the hardware store to make a duplicate of a key. No problem. They made the key. I went to the cashier. And as I often do, I charge everything so that I can rack up my miles for travel. So I slide my credit card into the machine. And then the cashier says, can I please see your credit card and your ID? And so I hand them both to her and she looks at them and I guess they compare names to make sure it's accurate, that they match. She was trying to verify my identity all for a $2.50 transaction. Who are you? Today, as we focus on that theme, our identity in Christ, we look at our lesson from Ephesians chapter 1. And in this passage from chapter 1, it tells us who we are. We are the children of God. It says in verse 3 that we have been adopted by God. In the days where Paul wrote this letter to the people in Ephesus, it was a time when people viewed babies and life in a very harsh way. When a new baby is born, they bring it before the father. In some of the Greek and Roman cultures, they bring that child before the father. And the father has a choice. He can reach down, pick up that baby, and embrace it as his very own. Accept it and love it and be father to that child. Or he might look at that child and decide he doesn't want it. That that birth defect or that birthmark was not what he wants. Or if it was a boy, he might abandon it because he wanted a girl. Or if he wanted a girl, he would abandon the boy and just leave him there. The father had a choice to pick up that child as his very own or to leave, abandon. Whenever a child was abandoned in that manner, Sooner or later, someone would come by and they would take that child to the dump. And there, that child would be given away to someone else who would raise that child to be either a slave or a prostitute. Who are you? Have you ever felt dumped in your life? Dumped by a spouse? Dumped by a friend? Dumped by an employer? Have you ever felt dumped? Because that's what the world tells us. They are trying to create our identity. They're trying to tell us who we should be. You ever get one of those marketing or political campaign Telephone surveys? 
They ask you questions like this. Are you Republican or Democrat, independent? They want to know your age bracket. Are you between 18 and 25, 26 to 40, 41 to 55, 55 to 65? Are you a senior citizen? They ask about your household. Are you married? Is it a single family? How many people live there? What's your income? Do you make more than $18,000 a year? Do you make $50,000 a year? What's your gross annual income? Are you over $100,000? They're asking all these questions, not because they're interested in you, but so that they can form an identity for you, for their marketing and for their political campaign purposes. They're telling you who you should be and what you are like. And we hear that often from the world. So often we hear, you are not good enough. You are good for nothing. You are not attractive enough. You are not smart enough. You don't come from the right family. You don't have the right education. Often the world tells us where we lack. They are dumping us once again. But our lesson in Ephesians tells us that God comes to us and He picks us up. He accepts us as we are. He embraces us and He loves us and He chooses us to be His very own. We belong to Him. We are the children of God. Because God has adopted us. He has given us value. He has made us precious. We are precious to Him. Our Lord loves you more than you can ever imagine. Those slaves that are raised, when they're old enough, they're brought back to the market. And Paul is writing in Ephesians about slaves because Ephesus was one of the major centers for slavery and for the slave trade. When they were old enough to be sold as slaves or as prostitutes, the owners would take them to the market and they would be sold for a price. The fee that was collected was called the redemption fee. To pay back the cost for raising that slave or prostitute. In verse 7 of our reading in Ephesians, it tells us that we were brought for a price. We have been redeemed not by money, Not by our own effort or good works. We have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Our Lord who has died in our place. We do not have to be punished for our sins because Jesus has already been punished. We have been adopted. We have been redeemed. And we have also been sealed by the Holy Spirit. In verse 13, it talks about that. You know, slaves in those days, they were marked. They were tattooed or branded to identify who they belonged to. And so are you. God has adopted you. He has redeemed you through Jesus Christ. And now he has marked you through the waters of baptism. He says, you are mine. Your sins are forgiven. You are my child. You belong to me and no one else. You have been sealed by the Holy Spirit. Through that word, through that promise God has made to you, that you belong to him. That is that wonderful news for you and me today. And so we say, now what? As an adopted child of God, as a redeemed child, of God. 
as a sealed child of God. What does God desire today? What does this mean for me in my life today? It means this. Those four applications that we heard earlier. We don't live under condemnation. We don't need to tear down. We live a life building others up. We are now followers of Jesus. And we want to follow Jesus as he goes about his mission. We want to be God's people who can help seek those who are lost. We can be God's people who help to make disciples who can make additional disciples. We want to multiply our disciples. That is the difference we can live in our lives today. We can do so with great joy because we know who we are. We are the adopted, redeemed, sealed people of God. May God bless you as you walk with Him each and every day. Amen. Amen. And now may the peace of Christ, which surpasses all human understanding, God save your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord.